Hi, so I really made my own freaking amp, and it's called SMS Northern Perkele. Uh, Introduct was obviously recorded using that, and uh, I'm first going to show you how you should use it, and what kind of uh, settings it has, how you can tweak it, and um, then let's go how you can install it, if you like that. On the other hand, be aware that this is a beta version, so basically everything is probably going to change. Um, it's still missing some features that I'd like to add, and, and so on. Uh, and then, at last, last thing, I would show you how I actually implemented that, if you're interested in that really nerdy stuff. Uh, it's done in C++, but it's actually a fairly simple concept, how it all works, so I'm sure you can follow if you have sometimes done any kind of programming. Okay, so, uh, here I have a Kala, plugging host application in Linux. Uh, you can load plugins here, and uh, I use this a lot. So, if you don't know what it is, just go on and, and Google and learn about that, or check my other videos, whatever. Um, I have kind of initiated this a little bit. I do have my, my output here selected. I have It's rooted to multiple outputs, so it's just a convenience. I have hydrogen loaded there on the background. The compressor is coming from my input 3, which is the microphone. And so, I don't have anything. My, my guitar is not get processed that anyway, but it is plugged into my interface to the capture channel 1, so we start adding stuff here. Uh, let's start by adding the plugin, it will be called SMS Northern Perkele when it's installed, and then you can here, get it here, we will root the uh, guitar directly to it. Actually, you could use a, a noise gate here, I, I would use a noise gate as well, but let's just go without now. And you're not supposed to use it without cabinet simulation, so use something like, like LV2 Convolution uh, so that you can add, add the uh, impulse response of the cabinet. Uh, so you will just add it here and root it there, and then you have to go here to the rack and the gear icon to open this uh, where you can actually load which file it, it loads. So I, I use this Guitar Hack original between, I usually use, let's say, uh, that has a good balance on basically everything that I would use. So, now I have it here, but I would actually also add the, the plugin that I, the second, secondary plugin basically that I made, because I did have a video a few weeks ago, actually a week ago, that I did this uh, Pseudo Meta Studio Amateur Delay, which was my first plugin, I was really into that, and, and so on. I made a new version of that, which is a SMS Stereo Delay. Um, it's basically exactly the same, except that it has two channels, uh, so that I can easily um, easily have the um, delay effect on both of the channels. So now that I have everything rooted, I can already hear the noise myself, you can probably as well. There's a lot of delay, but... Yeah, so we can actually put the delay a little bit down. Uh, so that's there, a little bit level down. But you can already hear that the... Uh Already with the default settings, and I have tried to do it so that already with the default settings using this, this guitar hack original between, it already sounds quite good. I think it sounds already quite good. So what this plugin is still missing that I want to add to it is, is a uh, proper GUI, so so user interface that you can actually use it. So uh, Kala creates this GUI here. Uh, I haven't done anything for that. I just defined which buttons I have, and and Kala does everything for me here. But usually you want to have your own nice GUI with some skulls and fire and blood. But yeah. Anyway, uh, it's a little bit nicer to see if I go to this this. Uh, this wrench icon here and to the parameters. So here we can see all the parameters that this this amp sim that I have actually supports. So obviously we have enable. So if I put enable zero, it's a straight bypass. Does nothing. Uh, there's still the echo comes from the other part or, or the um, delay. Then obviously I've chosen some values here to be good. Like the drive is 666. Volume is quite down. Uh, then, there's, then there's a low pass filter and high pass filter, and then there's the gain. Uh, the gain is actually a bad word for the for the filter itself. It's um, uh, it's actually a wet dry mix of the low pass and high pass filter. So basically, how much the original single passes versus the uh, 
how much the filtered signal pass through. Uh, how this is made is that I have a um, high pass before my wave shaper. So high pass is, is before the wave, sh wave shaper. Then I have the wave shaper, which is uh, hyperbolic tangent. And then I have the low pass after that. And uh, the high, high pass and low pass are implemented as uh, infinite e I I R infinite impulse response type of uh, filters. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's um, for all the amp sim that, that I have been using. Um, I think it's it's on par with everything that I have been using, honest, honestly. But obviously, I used like, quite a lot of time to tweak all these this uh, sims that I have. So maybe I just put the low pass a little bit, get uh, a little bit more uh, uh, darker and tone like that. Or we can le let a little bit more of the I sing all. my pseudo meta studio northern perkele and as said it's a uh, beta version i will change things and stuff and everything i guess <laughs> maybe not everything but i'm trying to make a nice gui for it and maybe i'm constraining the the uh, uh the values that are possible to be changed here a little bit more i will maybe make a knob that Actually, controls kind of like. Yeah, let's install it. Okay, so uh, I have it all in GitHub, and here's my GitHub. It's uh, GitHub.com/slash/surzipe/ slash pseudo meta studio is the repository where i have this stuff and it's actually under that there's a folder called lv2 plugins that is the interesting one so let's just you don't have to go there you just get the link what i have here um uh, so i will just copy it from here and um you can I, I will leave it to the description you can get it from there um but then you go to a terminal you do git clone and then you paste the um, paste the github.com slash surzip slash pseudometer studio which pulls the uh, source code files from that repository to your local file uh, local local uh, file system then you go cd to pseudometer studio change directory to that and also cd to lv2 plugins because that's where i have all of those um, if you want to build everything that I have here, there's some crap there as well. You just go with make and it will make all of them. Um, but you can also go with individual plugins. So I will do individual one here. So I will do make. And by the way, when you type in make and hit tab twice, you can see what you can actually make. So you can make uh, SMS Northern Perkele. So make SMS Northern Perkele. And that builds it. Then we do make install. So it has to be make means that it builds it. Then make install uh, installs it to uh, so that you know your applications can actually find it. So make install SMS Northern Perkele. And that just basically copies 
the uh, LV2 folder that it's just created to the folder where you usually have your LV2 plugins. So in case that's not the correct folder, you just actually have to move it to other other place. Uh, but this is should be okay in Ubuntu Studio and, and many other distros as well. And that's actually it. Now, because I'm recording here uh, and, and doing the video, so I have the color running all the time here, just because of my, uh, obviously my microphone setup and things like that. Um, I cannot really show it to you, but just, you know, believe me that when you do that, it's uh, there in the, in the plugins and it's that easy. If you want to get them all, just go make, make that them, does them all. So there's Northern Berger, Amateur Delay, Stereo Delay, 44 hertz, so that's just like a 44 hertz tone. Uh, Northern Berger, why is twice there? Oh no, uh, sorry, it was uh, that was a previous command. So here, yeah, and then we have the white noise. The white noise I was actually using uh, because I had the white noise, and then I was implementing my my uh, filters, and then I was checking the spectrum analyzer the, how my filters are actually performing. So that was just useful for that. Uh, so make created them all, make install, um, installs them all, and, and that's it. That's how you install them. When you do the make, if you get errors, check the page for, um, for if you go here to the LV2 plugins, uh, check for the dependencies that you need. So you might need to install some things like the builders essentials, um, package config, LV2 development that you definitely need and some other things here as well. Um, let me know in the comments if these are not all correct. I think I ha might have some extra here, but I, uh, yeah, actually probably not extra, but I might be missing something. But if I'm missing something, just let me know and I will add it here to the dependencies. Yeah, that's how you install it. Enjoy! Programming, it's for everyone. Yeah, let's just get into that. Um, so just a quick recap, if you skipped on this part, let's go to my GitHub, uh, Sudometer Studio, that's the repository. Uh, copy that, go to, you know, um, uh, clear, uh, go to terminal and uh, git clone and the git address. CD Sudometer Studio, CD LV2 plugins, and make um, then make install, make install like that. And now we are at the same spot with everyone else. Let's exit that. Uh, now I would use a VS Code, so Visual Studio Code. It's a quite nice IDE. Um, you would then navigate to like you would open the folder which is this uh, folder that we just get i already have it there open but uh, i will just show it that in my home directory i should have somewhere now Studio studio that's the one that i just git cloned so then it gets opened here to the explorer and it has all the content that came from came from uh, my repository but it also actually has these um sms uh, everything that's like .lv2 here, these are the ones that got just built uh, when we did the make command. So actually there's only the source folder is, is kind of relevant here. Um, so this can be deleted just here, but uh, it seems to be a little bit slow, so I'm not even trying that right now. Anyway, um, so if we go to the Sudometer Studio Northern Pergala, it is it has some few extra extra files here because I haven't done the UI yet for it. I'm kind of, I'm going to do it at some point. Um, but if we open like the uh, CPP file for it, so if you're interested, interested in the actual single processing, how every single sample is processed, this is where it happens. So it's this run function. So we get the count of samples and we already before that we get where is the buffer of the samples. So we will just iterate with the sample count over that buffer here. So 
for each uh, index, I guess, uh, for the sample count. If the enable is, is set, uh, we will get value from the buffer. We will apply the high pass filter. So I, this is just a high pass filter that I, I, I wrote. Uh, here is the gain value that I have. So basically the gain goes from zero to one. If it's one, then it's um, one times this and zero times the original value. So it's a wet dry mix. So if it's if it's all if it's on one, then you it, all you get is the high passed um, single. Or if it's all zero, then you get uh, the dry single, which completely bypasses the high pass filter. So that's how the high pass gain works there. So gain is a bad word for that. So that that we do for the value first. We are apply the high pass, then we apply Satan, apparently. Uh, so this is the wave shaper function. This is the hyperbolic tang tangent. Uh, this is the thing that makes the magic of distortion and, and overdrive and things like that. So I'm just passing the value and I'm multiplying it with the drive value. Uh, there are other wave shaper functions and this is actually kind of costly function. So this is a bad function to use in real time processing, even though it's not forbidden because the math library is actually allowed to be used in, in real time, uh, uh, real, real time plugins or plugins that claim to be uh, hard real time capable. Anyway, high pass, tan, uh, high pass, hyperbolic tangent and then with the same principle also the low pass after so I just kind of studied how you are supposed to do distortion and this came up quite often that you first apply high pass so that you only apply the um, the um, overdrive or distortion for the um, uh, high portion of the single and then you kind of you know apply low pass to get it a little bit back and the last thing that I do, I just scale whatever I have with the volume knob so that, you know, it gets amplified. And that's how it works. Um, I'm not going to go too much in depth with the high pass filters. To be honest, that was actually like the hardest part of this, I guess. Uh, the high pass filters and how those are supposed to be implemented. I am using this this IR, IIR, which is infinite impulse response. Um, there's also something called finite impulse response, so FIRs and IIRs. Um, uh, yeah, but I might make a video about that if someone is interested, but to be honest, I'm not confident enough to make that video.